Good morning. It is Thursday, July 21st. This is your AM Wake Up Call. I'm Ali Velshi joining you live this morning from New York. Two big stories we're following this morning. The final space shuttle landing and dozens of people here in the United States believed to be dead because of this incredible heat wave. Let's start with the shuttle. We are now less than one hour away from the final space shuttle landing. Just in the last half hour, we got a go for landing from NASA. The deorbit burn took place just in the last couple of minutes. In the deorbit burn, the shuttle's engines are fired to help it slow down before it hits the atmosphere. In less than 30 minutes, the shuttle and its crew will start to feel the effects of the atmosphere. They'll be about 80 miles above the Earth at that point. As the shuttle comes through the atmosphere, it heats up to about 5,000 degrees on the outside. Now, when it breaks through the atmosphere, many of the folks in Florida will hear those famous sonic booms. About five minutes before the landing at Kennedy Space Center, the commander will take manual control of the shuttle and pilot it to the ground. When the orbiter hits the runway, it will be going 220 miles an hour. The shuttle will land for the last time ever at 5.56 a.m. Eastern Time. And just so you know, NASA is considering this a night landing. The landing time is 42 minutes before sunrise in Florida. And once the shuttle touches down on the runway, you want to listen for the commander of the Atlantis, Chris Ferguson, to say the words, we'll stop. When this happens, the shuttle program is officially over. Right now, let's go straight over to Houston Mission Control, where our own Ed Lavendera joins us live. Ed, just so uh, our viewers know, uh, the space shuttle takes off from Kennedy Space Center in, uh, in Florida, but as soon as it is up, Houston takes control for that time and for the rest of the mission. How's it looking down there at Mission Control? Well, well, everything we've kept hearing all morning long is that everything is good, looking absolutely perfect, especially the weather. Uh, no complaints so far that that uh, uh, deorbital burn that you were just talking about, everything there went smoothly as well. Look behind me. These are the, the men and women who have been working on this last uh, final shuttle mission, uh, Ali, and you, you can tell uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, emotional people in, in there. We've seen a, a lot of smiles this morning, a lot of, several people with, with cameras taking pictures of themselves. NASA has their, their uh, photographers photographers there in, inside as well, documenting these final moments. These are the men and women uh, who uh, are around the clock man, man the shuttle mission, make sure everything g goes smoothly. Uh, if you look there in the middle uh, of the passion, there's a, a man by the name of Tony Sakachi. He is the flight director. He will be the man helping uh, bring the space shuttle down for this for this final moment. It was interesting. About an hour ago, they were going through some of the final checks to prepare for that deorbital burn, um, and he, he said, uh, "I can't believe uh, that this. Uh, I never thought that this moment would ever come." Kind of talking about the, the the making the call for the final systems check. So you can, I think it speaks volumes to to what these men and women are experiencing here. There's a, a great great number of people who filled up the, the visitor gallery just off to our side here, families of these flight directors who have worked so many uh, space shuttle missions, uh, clearly an emotional moment. Remember Houston here, Mission Control, this is the area where the astronauts live, this is where they train, this is where thousands and thousands of people who have worked on the space shuttle mission for 30 years. Uh, and, and they're watching this moment closely. In fact, just outside of the Mission Control building, outside, uh, 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 many people gathering. Uh, they're setting up a, a viewing location to watch the, the shuttle Atlantis come home. So you can imagine, Ali, that this is an extremely um, emotional moment. Uh, and and uh, everyone here hoping everything here goes smoothly within the, within the next hour. But uh, all of these people back here, you imagine after the shuttle lands, and we assume everything goes goes well. Everything so far looking looking very good, looking to go smoothly. Uh, that the, these people will have a, a, a lot to say and a lot to feel based on everything that they've been through through the last 30 years. Ali? Ed, uh, within half an hour, we uh, about half an hour ago, we got word that it was go for landing, uh, which means it was beginning its final orbit, uh, probably the final orbit, the 200th orbit uh, of Earth. Uh, what, what are the contingencies if it doesn't land at 556? Does it take another spin around and, and try and come back? Yeah, they have, they have contingencies for, for a lot of that and, and what might happen. But, you know, I, I don't get any, any sense here that any of that uh, is actually a concern at this point. We've heard repeatedly here this morning uh, that the weather is absolutely perfect, um, that everything, all, all the, all the uh, machinery, uh, everything on, on board the space shuttle is, is, is working perfectly. So any other contingency plans, I'd be shocked if we go to uh, at, at this point. So everything seems to be uh, clear to, for the space shuttle to land here within the hour. 
All right, uh, Ed, thanks very much for that. We will be staying with you uh, through the course of the hour. We're watching this very, very closely. As we said, the space shuttle Atlantis now on its final orbit of Earth. It's got to go for landing. The landing is expected uh, in the next 50 minutes. We'll stay with it very closely. Very big story this morning. Atlantis is heading home. Right now it is flying over the Pacific Ocean. This is not just any shuttle landing. This is the final landing of the space program, of the space shuttle program. Watch the landing live this hour right here on CNN in less than half an hour. But Good morning. It is Thursday, July 21st. This is your AM Wake Up Call. I'm Ali Velshi, joining you live for this morning from New York. 31 minutes after the hour, the space shuttle Atlantis is less than, than half an hour from landing. You're looking uh, at a map here of, of where it is. It appears to be uh, on that trajectory. You can see where it is at the bottom of your screen, uh, heading uh, between South America and North America. It's heading to uh, somewhere around the Panama Canal. It'll then cut up uh, and head directly for landing in Florida. A touchdown is scheduled for 5.56 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Right now, it should be about 80 miles above Earth and starting to feel the effects of the atmosphere. Our John Zarella is live at the Kennedy Space Center, which is where it is expected to touch down. It's dark over there right now. It's going to be a nighttime landing. John, how's it looking on your side? Well, it's great, Allie, as far as the weather goes. Absolutely couldn't ask for uh, better conditions. As you mentioned, uh, Atlantis now on, uh, on the last leg coming home, the last time a space shuttle uh, will come back uh, and land. Uh, this is it, the, the last flight in the 30-year history of the shuttle program. It's going to come over the, uh, the Yucatan, as you mentioned. It'll cross the United States uh, at Naples, Florida, before landing here at the Kennedy Space Center. You know, a couple of months ago, I had an opportunity to sit down with Commander uh, Chris Ferguson, uh, who is, of course, uh, at the controls of Atlantis right now. And Ferguson talked about what he thought it would be like when he made this historic landing. We want to make sure we get the job done. Uh, and when the job is done, we can look back and reflect and think about where the place in history lied for this final shuttle flight. You know, and Ferguson uh, added that uh, he was bound and determined that he was going to be the last person out of the vehicle. And, of course, later today, Allie, after Atlantis comes home, there's going to be a ceremony out here on the runway. And then a little bit later in the morning, there will be a ceremony back over at the uh, orbiter processing facility, as they call it, where thousands of workers will be allowed to gather uh, and uh, see the, uh, the vehicle for the last time. And, you know, Allie, more than 2,000 workers are actually going to be laid off tomorrow day after Atlantis, uh, Atlantis land. So pretty bittersweet times here. Yeah. Alex. Absolutely. And, and listen, uh, Mission yeah. Control in Houston is going to be steering them in. It's going to be taking over the landing. Just explain that to us because you were with me where you are when it took off on the 8th of July. But after it takes off, it gets handed over to, to Houston? Right, hands over to Mission Control. They handle the entire flight. They handle it until it's back here on the ground. And you may hear some noise behind me. There's a whole convoy of vehicles here waiting to go out and meet the vehicle. Uh, and as soon as its wheels stop on the ground here, uh, then it's turned back over to the folks here at the Kennedy Space Center. But you're right. As soon as it cleared the tower on liftoff, it was handed off to Mission Control in Houston, and they have commanded the entire flight until this point when it comes back and lands here. And as you mentioned, uh, it's re-entered the Earth's atmosphere now, going through that maximum heating now on those tiles, on that thermal protection system, several thousand degrees uh, they are feeling right now as they're coming through the atmosphere. And this will be, this will happen for the next uh, couple minutes or so, then they'll, they'll finish peak heating. Yeah. Uh, and then they're going to they're going to come in. You'll hear those sonic booms over Florida just moments, about three or four minutes yeah. before it lands. Is that how it goes? Yeah, you'll hear a twin sonic booms, and it's interesting because the first sonic boom is created by the shock wave off of the nose of the vehicle, and then that second shock wave is actually created off the tail of the orbiter. So, kind of an interesting right. fact, but that's why we have the double sonic boom. All right. John, we'll check in with you in just a little bit. John Zarella uh, in, uh, in Florida.
Just 20 minutes away from the final historic landing of the Space Shuttle Atlantis and the final landing of the Space Shuttle program, you're looking at dark pictures uh, of uh, uh, Space Center, uh, Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is a, a, a satellite image. You can see the Space Shuttle approaching uh, right between uh, South America and North America. That's how it's going to make its entry. Uh, it is probably about uh, 70 to 80 miles above Earth right now. Everything looking to be on schedule. Hey, before we take a quick break, I want to give you our Get Smart question today. Compared to a commercial airplane, how much much faster does the space shuttle hit the runway when it lands? About the same? Five times faster or 20 times faster? I'll give you the answer on the other side. It's 37 minutes after the hour. We are following very closely. We're less than 15 minutes away from the last landing of the space shuttle Atlantis and the last landing of any space shuttle at all. That's a trajectory that we are watching. It's going to come in above Florida, uh, entering Florida airspace at uh, Naples, Florida, crossing over to the uh, other side and landing at uh, Kennedy Space Center at 5.56 a.m. Eastern Time. We're getting very close to folks in Florida hearing those uh, twin sonic booms. Uh, and uh, we're looking at, uh, that map says that uh, it is over Cuba right now. So we're getting very, very close. We'll stay on that for you live. But first, let's take a look at this. Good morning. It's Thursday, July 21st. This is your AM Wake Up Call. I'm Ali Velshi, joining you live this morning from New York. It's 46 minutes after the hour. Two big stories this morning. The final space shuttle landing. And dozens of people are believed to be dead here in the United States because of an incredible heat wave. Let's start with the shuttle. We're now less than 10 minutes away from the final space shuttle landing. It's expected to touch down at 5.56 a.m. Eastern Time. You can see it is just about entering uh, Florida airspace right now. Right now, astronauts are feeling the effects of breaking through the atmosphere. They've gone through that now. Uh, as the shuttle went through the atmosphere, it heated up to about 5,000 degrees on the outside. Uh, when it broke through, many of the folks in Florida, well, they may be hearing it in just the next couple minutes. They'll hear those infamous sonic booms. That'll happen about five minutes before the landing at Kennedy Space Center. The commander will then take manual control of the shuttle and pilot it to the ground. When the orbiter hits the runway, it'll be going about 220 miles an hour. Once again, the shuttle will land for the last time at 5.56 a.m. Eastern Time. And just so you know, NASA considers this a night landing because the landing time is 42 minutes before sunrise in Florida. Let's go straight over to Houston Mission Control where our Ed Lavendera is standing by. Ed, how's everything looking at Mission Control with less than 10 minutes to go? Ali, everyone very calm here, and this is a, a fantastic vantage point to, to watch this final space shuttle landing here. This is mission control. A lot of calm uh, people in, in this room. Everything has been looking so great this morning in terms of the weather and the way all of the machinery is, is operating. So people here in this room able to enjoy these final moments of the space shuttle program. Right there in the middle, uh, one of the men you see with his back to us, a second from the left there, uh, that is Tony Sakachi. He's the flight director. He's the man communicating constantly with with the uh, space shuttle Atlantis crew. Uh, this, you can kind of sense uh, the emotion of, of this moment weighing on, him, weighing on him. A little while ago, they, they were talking about going through some of the final checks, and uh, before he went around the room and, and got all that, he said, I never thought this moment would ever come. So uh, here, Ali, people preparing for the end of the space shuttle mission. Nine minutes and 15 seconds, according to NASA's clock. Uh, Ed, thanks very much. 